Hola, buenos días. Yeah, let's start our recording. Okay. Bueno, vamos a grabar aquí y muy buenos días. Ah, aquí vienen más and we got some more folks coming on here soon. Pronto. Aquí vienen otros estudiantes. Ah, uh, vamos a practicar hoy con chunks. So we're going to practice some mm -hmm. of these uh, yeah, chunk things here. So we'll kind of take one step back to just kind of get oriented on what we'll be doing and uh, move on from there. And I'll take any questions you might have had. Uh, actually, let's start with our questions from the video first. Kind of flip our order here a little bit, just in case anybody else joins a little bit later. We'll give them a couple minutes to come on in. Um, is, is his what I would call slurring typical. It take it takes me a long while to get that very close slide through. And it almost sounds like he is, oh, we're not on that one. It almost sounds like he is slurring. Oh, and the, the chunk video? Yes. Um. Okay, yeah, we'll get to that in, the, in, in just okay. a bit. See, the one, we'll get the to bar, that in just a bar, bit. Yeah, the Barcelona. The woman in sí, Barcelona. Sí. Eso, sí, la la mujer de Barcelona. Sí. Um it will sound like slurring. It will, but we'll come back okay. to that in a minute because I think this part will not take quite as long. So we'll kind of do clean up here. Uh el video de escucha, our listening video. I want to take any questions you might have had. Um this has got a translation below uh the the subtitle and then the English translation. So I, I assume you won't have a lot of questions, but there might be something as to why some structure was used. This is the video. Uh, aquí tenemos uh, el video de La Catrina. Uh, mm. La Catrina Garbancera is a full term, but everybody calls her La Catrina, La Catrina. Um, and uh I had always thought it was, you know, for a long time I had thought, oh, it's sort of a derivation of Catalina, Catherine. No, La Catrina. Catrine is, you know, somebody who is kind of fancy, fancy schmancy. Okay. Uh, or that's the male form, Catrine, and the female form would be Catrina, the feminine form. Uh, bien. Pero el origen de La Catrina, y aquí tienen, sí, la foto de La Catrina típica, y las mujeres se, se maquillan, se maquillan para el Día de Muertos, y se maquillan uh, uh, eh, en la forma de La Catrina. Uh, but I was really kind of unaware of how much of this Catrina thing here, you see the full makeup, yeah? Um, I was unaware of how much of this is really kind of a cultural dig. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the Catrina mm -hmm. really has a history of being kind of a dig at people who are hmm, getting out of their social class. That's not quite right. Uh, putting, on putting on airs that's maybe a little closer. Um, uh, the thing to remember about when the Catrina started to become really popular was in the 1800s, and in the 1800s in Mexico, in Mexico, um, the president of the country, Porfirio Diaz, was uh, this was kind of a uh, Frenchifying couple of decades in the mid 1800s to late 1800s a lot of there was a great deal of french influence in mexico at that time because the president brought in french architects to design the famous um uh arts palace uh palacio de uh, bellas artes i think that's the name uh, and so there was a lot of French influence and, and French was sort of a, you know, it was sort of the lingua franca <laughs> of the time. It was, you know, what, uh, Europeans, you learn French, you learn German, you learn maybe English. Uh, so there was a lot of French influence and 
So this Catrina the Thinning is kind of a dig to people becoming too Frenchified, too big for their britches, you might say. Mm. Uh, they started from this time to uh, the, the, the move towards Mexicans saying, hey, you know what? We ought to be proud of the indigenous heritage we have in our background. Really started to get a role. It was a slow roll, but uh, it did start to uh, come about a little bit more. So the poem of the La Catrina is, uh, oh, you know, you uh, fancy yourself all up, but, you know, in the end, we all wound up, wind up being skeletons. So what are you putting on airs for? That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. um, and... I was interested to see that Diego Rivera had something to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, his role in it was that he painted it into some of his murals. I don't know if I can find the exact right place, but uh, he painted it in, into some of his murals, the figure which people had already seen in newspapers. Mm -hmm. Okay. For many years already. Uh, he actually painted in, hit it into a lot of his murals. And and Diego Rivera was a very big proponent of painting people from the indigenous cultures, people who would sell flowers on the street. Uh, you know, uh this this whole proponent of let's let's remember that we in Latin America have indigenous roots. Uh really became super, super important. And the thing I had forgotten to send, but I'll remember to send it in uh, this week's uh, uh, email is this little thing that talks a little bit more about La Catrina, uh, La Calavera Garbancera. Uh, and it's just something interesting to read in English that talks a little more about uh, how that happened. Uh, Catrina is the iconic modern Mexican image of death. She speaks to the conflict between the rich and the poor and the fact that in the end we are all equal. So, um, you know, it is uh, kind of an interesting, more of a cultural note than really learning any uh, specific language stuff. Okay. El lunes, el lunes pasado, uh, venimos a el restaurante, el restaurante Barrio Queen, a La Catrina es en el menu de restaurante. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh... Bueno, entonces, ah, oh, Nora, ¿quieres decir algo? Lo que uh, más te gusta sobre el restaurante. Ah. Muy bueno. <laughs> ¿Cuál, cuál, ¿Cuál es la cosa que más, lo que más te gustó del restaurante? Uh, me gusta uh, chile relleno. Me gusta chile reino con vegetales. Con vegetales, bien, bien. Mm. Excelente. Ok. Uh, bueno, gracias, Nora. Aquí. Bueno, ok. Here was the video of the guy. Now we'll get on track. You see, vamos a practicar aquí ahorita, sí. Um, and uh, Diana, you mentioned that you felt like he was kind of slurring. Slurring. That's how in that's essence, how in essence, you're not too far off. But this is uh, this idea of linking words or words that blend into each other is pretty much a classic reason why English speakers have a tough time following uh, normal rate of speech. The only thing I can give it as an equivalent is uh, 
por ejemplo, if you're teaching somebody English, um, you teach them how to ask a question like, what are you going to do tomorrow? But the way that really comes out when people really talk is often, what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do tomorrow? And look at how that runs together. Mm -hmm. You know, what the poor person learning English hopes to hear is what are you going to do tomorrow? And what they hear is what are you going to do tomorrow? And look, so we actually do that too. We do it. Um, uh, but we're unconscious of it. <laughs> uh, and we perhaps think we do it less than we really do. So, uh, while while it does feel like he's going fairly fast now and and also keep in mind he uh specifically his clientele is people who are trying to get to upper levels of ratings for work for living abroad so it's a tougher level and we're not going to go to that demanding a level okay okay but um what he wants people to be aware of is these words so now we're going to move on to the actual practice is uh these words that link together or words that hang together in a phrase and sometimes it's best to just know these words are all going to run together and so we can plug in other ideas to practice it okay and the one of the big ideas that he plugged in was this lo que mas me gusta lo que mas me gusta and it's probably best to just memorize that that is a big chunk of words that runs together and what it's going to mean is what i like most or what i like the best there are a couple of ways we might phrase that in english lo que mas me gusta es el espacio en mi cocina por ejemplo okay but if you know that lo que mas me yeah. And of course, that can become lo que más te, lo que más le, lo que más nos. It can, you know, that little me word might change to a different pronoun. But uh, just talking about ourselves, it'll be the me pronoun. Lo que más me gusta. Okay. Uh, uh, por ejemplo, lo que, lo que nos dijo Nora, what uh, Nora told us, lo que, lo que nos dijo uh, Nora. Uh, ¿cuál, es, uh, cuál fue what was cuál fue lo que más te gustó right and we want we just change it from me gusta was te gustó what did you like the best sí vale pero vamos a usarlo aquí en presente uh, lo que más me gusta otro ejemplo de lo que más me gusta And then we're going to move on to how we plug in other sides, other things besides gusta. Lo que can, más. Can, can, you, um, can you flip that by saying lo que menos me gusta, what I liked least? Oh, can you change it to menos? Sí, se puede. Mm -hmm. Excelente, Catalina, sí. Oh, that is a really good point. Can you flip that to say lo que menos me gusta? Sí. Lo que sí. Okay, vale. Um, Would it usually be followed with the day? Like you said, de mi casa, blah, blah, blah. It's it's always the... Yeah, okay, the, so... The little connecting words that are hard to know what to use there. Uh, sí, entiendo. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Now, are there variations that may kind of get in the way? Uh like sí. maybe about okay. my vacation or about the, I don't know. See, sí. lo que más me gusta de las vacaciones, what I best like about vacation in general. See, sí. lo que más me gusta del otoño, what I like best about autumn. Lo que más, but you may not have the de, that de phrase in there. You know, if it's a okay. running conversation, you may or may not need the de phrase, but if we okay. need to define, yeah. 
uh, lo que más me gusta de mi casa, lo que más me gusta de las vacaciones, lo que más me gusta del otoño, lo que más me gusta uh, de mi barrio, what I like best about my neighborhood. Okay. Sí, lo que más me gusta de mi pueblo, lo que más me gusta de mi ciudad, right? That little de phrase you see in parentheses may or may not be there depending on how the conversation's rolling around. Okay. Hay otro ejemplo que ustedes tienen de lo que más me gusta. Do you have any other example of using lo que más me gusta? Or no? Lo que más me gusta es salir con mis amigos. Bien, sí. We can plug a... a We can plug a verb in there. Lo que más me gusta es ver a mis amigos. Seeing my, what I like most is seeing my friends. Sí. Uh, lo que más me gusta es vivir en uh, el desierto. What I like best is living in the desert. So, it, yeah, there are many things that can plug in after the lo que más me gusta. Could be a verb, an infinitive. Yeah. Could be uh, a thing. Sí, y depende. Ok. Uh, bien. So, a good thing to know is the lo que más me can stay the same, but we might plug in, instead of gusta, a different kind of verb. But that lo que más me part will stay the same. Ok. So, if we want to change or shift our emphasis from what I like the most... If we want to shift it to what bugs me most, what frustrates me most, what annoys me the most, it'll become instead of gusta, frustra. See? Or it could even be molesta, bothers. It could even be that verb. Lo que más me frustra. Lo que más me frustra de mi pueblo es la gente que no apoya a las escuelas. What frustrates me most about my town is the people who don't support the schools. Okay. It could be something less momentous than that. Hay algún ejemplo? Do you have an example of the frustra? Sí. Lo que, I'll do. Oh, oh, perdón. Uh, uh, oh, that. Trish, let's take you first and then we'll take Marco. Sí. Okay. Okay. Uh, lo, que más, lo que más me frustra es cuando de mi vecinos... Pasean a sus perros sin Corea. Ah, ok. Lo que más me frustra, eh, uh, uh, lo que más me frustra es la gente, eh, uh, uh, o oh, eh, son El, mis vecinos que sí. pasean a los oh, perros eh, sin eh, Corea, who walk them without a leash. Ok. Eso, sí. Bien. O es cuando la gente pasean sin a sus perros sin correa. Sí, perfecto. Muy bien. Muy bien. Otra idea. Marcos. Yeah. Uh, lo que más me frustra. Uh, question. Me frustran for plural. Son todos los malos conductores. Ah, all bad drivers. Sí. Uh, lo, que más me, uh, lo que más me frustra, generalmente. And I know uh, um, uh, what, and here the lo que is that, that generic lo que. Lo que más me frustra, sí, son... Uh, uh, Malos conductores, sí. Bad drivers. Sí. Ok. The lo que más me frustra keeps it kind of always singular. The, because you're saying the thing that. The lo que is the thing that. So, ok, in English you could say the thing that bugs me, the thing that frustrates me. But you're also likely to say what frustrates me the most. There are different ways in English we may express that, but 
the way it's going to come out kind of naturally in Spanish is lo que, lo que más me frustra. Okay, otro ejemplo de frustra. Here's mine. I did it on Sunday. Lo que más me frustra, frustra es un sermón muy largo en la iglesia. Ah, bien. Okay. Bien. Vale. Uh, bueno, otro ejemplo. Uh, Diamá. Oh. Lo, lo, que, lo que más me frustra en mi barrio es la gente que, que tiene perros que hace mucho ruido. Ah, sí. La gente con perros ruidosos. People with noisy dogs. Sí, bien. Bueno, Pat, ¿tienes algo? Lo que más me frustra es cuando nuestro vecina no limpia, and I wasn't sure about this, después de su ocho caballos. Would you say clean up after would be that be the después de? Mm, otra vez. Uh... Okay. Um, lo que más me frustra es cuando nuestro vecina no limpia después de su caballos. Uh, ah. tiene, tiene ocho caballos. Oh, uh, ocho. <laughs> Qué asco. Wow. Tiene muchos caballos. Okay. Cuando mm -hmm. no limpia, when she doesn't clean up. Mm -hmm. Gee. I, I sí. would move. <laughs> <laughs> me, me mudaría. I would move. Me mudaría. Hypothetical. Me mudaría. I would move. <laughs> Meaning I'm not doing it, but yeah, what if uh, I could? Me mudaría. Uy, sí. Uh, para mucha gente aquí, sí, uh, lo, lo que más uh, les frustra es cuando la gente con perritos no limpian mm. después de... Ah, uh, sí. Ah, uh, dejar caca en la calle. Uh, <laughs> leaving their poop on the street, ¿sí? Es, ah, uh -huh. uh, sí. Desgraciadamente. Ah, uh, bueno. Um, ok. ¿Algo más que con frustra? Ah, uh, bueno, sí. Uh. Sí, estuvimos una elección uh, anoche. Um, entonces, uh, lo que más me frustran es las advertencias políticas. Ah, los anuncios. Anuncios. Okay. De, de uh, políticos. Ah, oh, sí. Cada vez más y más y más. Uy, el año que viene pff, va a ser horrible, sí. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Lo que más me frustra es la cantidad de letreros, signs, letreros de política mm -hmm. en, en todas las calles, ¿sí? Uh, este año no es tan terrible, pero muchas veces sí, es, es difícil. Ok, uh, vale, hay otra cosa. Ah, lo que más me frustra. No, okay. Adelante, adelante. Let's get into something cheerful. See, more in the lo que más me gusta category, because it's a happier category than frustra, is anima. Animar is to pump somebody up, you know, to uh, something that cheers me up, something that gets me going in a good way. Instead of the fruits that get you going in a bad way, see? ¿sí? Lo que más me anima. Lo que más me anima. And no, but when somebody says me anima, that me anima is going to all run into each other. Lo que más me anima por la mañana es una taza de café en el patio. What cheers me up most, what gets me going the most, uh, is a nice cup of coffee on the back porch. Okay. Vale. Otra idea, con anima. 
lo que más me anima es cuando salto en la piscina. Ah, okay. Or did you say earlier it might be better just say es saltar in Saltar. la piscina? Saltar? Yes, jump. But what so, you mean is like jump in the pool, like you go in the pool to do a few laps? Yeah. Um, if you have the infinitive, that means jumping into the pool, though? Yeah. Uh, so that would be okay if what you really mean is you like to dive in. Okay. But, you know, a lot of times when we say, I like to jump in the pool, what we mean is I like to spend some time in the pool. I like to do a few laps or I like to relax in the pool. Mm. So probably... A little. Well, I was really thinking about jumping in like a cannonball because that's refreshing. Okay, so you know that saltar and that uh, that cannonball idea is good. You know, if you've got kids who like to cannonball, and the whole point for the kids is the joy of the big splash, then saltar is a great verb to use. If you're talking about you and as an adult, I want to hop in the pool to swim. A little, it'll be more natural to express that as. Lo que más me anima es nadar un poquito. Okay. Es nadar, sí. Eh, uh, uh, es uh, hacer ejercicio en, el, en la piscina. Okay. Uh, bien, sí. Uh, and saltar is really going to have that meaning of literally jump. So, yeah, for little kids who want to make a big splash, saltar is great. Okay. Okay. Trish, tienes algo? Uh, sí, it's kind of misma. Lo que más me anima es hacer ejercicio por las mañanas. Sí, lo que más me anima es hacer ejercicio. Hacer ejercicio, sí, por las mañanas especialmente. Excelente. Otra idea. Lo que más me anima es una película muy divertida. Sí. Lo que más me anima, me anima es ver una película divertida. Es una película divertida. Bien, bien. Una, una comedia, quizás. Sí, bien. Excelente. Otra idea con anima. Lo que más me anima es cuando hago una pieza de joyas nuevas. Ah, excelente. Sí. Cuando hago, when I make something. Excelente. Fantástico. Ah, ah, a ver si sí. otra idea con anima. Lo que... Lo que... Sí. Lo que más me, me anima son las hermosas vistas de mi casa. Ah, sí. perfecto. Perfecto. Vale, bueno. Uh, otro ejemplo. Mariana, sí. Uh, lo que más anamilla es cuando escucho música. Ah, sí, es cuando escucho música, sí. Lo que más me anima es escuchar música. Escuchar música relajante. Listening to relaxing music. Sí, sí. Escuchar música de jazz. Escuchar música de rock. De una banda de rock. Sí, eso. Bien. Perfecto. Hay otra idea con anima. Anima. And with that word anima, think of animate. Someone who is animated is very yeah, kind of demonstrative, right? Uh, animation is considered a something that little kids like because it gets them kind of pepped up. Yeah, see. Okay. Can, vale. can I throw another one out there? But I want to check a word first. Um, part of this is, and I wasn't really, I, I looked it up, but I didn't sound right. To receive or to get something. And what came up was, Quizás, what are you receiving? It might depend on that. Un autógrafo. Okay, sí. Uh, get es difícil de traducir uh, en español. Uh, depende, sí. 
conseguir get uh, uh, receive or take something could be conseguir uh, uh, could be obtener uh, uh, lo que más me anima es obtener un aumento de salario. What, what pumps me up the most is getting a, a bump in my salary, bump, in, you know, a raise. Yeah. Sí. Um, obtener, conseguir, uh, 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 a veces tener, sometimes tener, kind of depends on what you're getting. Uh, what, you know, if it, uh, yeah, uh, getting a raise, getting a thing, conseguir works. Yeah. Uh, what, what, uh, cheers me up is, uh, getting good news is recibir o tener buenas noticias. Yeah. Getting news is not really like I'm taking something. So there is probably not conseguir, but you know, uh, Tener o recibir. Depende un poquito. Pero buena pregunta. Okay. Well, let, let me try this one then. Mm -hmm. um, I apologize for taking two here, but... Um, Está bien. Lo que más me anima es conocer a un jugador famosa y conseguir un autógrafo. Sí. Conocer meeting. Perfecto. Es conocer un jugador famoso, ¿sí? uh, un deportista, y conseguir un uh, autógrafo and getting that autograph. Sí. Y conseguir there is really super good because, uh, you know, you're looking to actually get something in your hot little hand with that autograph. Eso es. Sí. Perfecto. Muy bien. Uh, bueno. Lo que más me interesa. And you may say about de mi trabajo, but it doesn't have to be de mi trabajo. That's just an example. Es un ejemplo. Lo que más me interesa. Lo que más me interesa. And again, the me interesa is all going to slide together. It will slur. Me interesa will run together. Lo que más me interesa and it might be just in general, then you don't need a de phrase. Uh, lo que más me interesa de mi trabajo es uh, la gente amable en mi, mis clases. ¿Sí? Lo que más me interesa uh, de mi trabajo, uh, o la, lo que más me interesa es la gente en mis clases. Bien, por ejemplo. Is it? Sí, Kathleen. Pregunta, um, is the word most is still in this though, right? What interests me most is, or is it, you know, I don't know, books interest me, but I'm more interested in football or something like that. Um, I mean, when you're saying la, 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 locate mass, they inter you're saying what interests you most. Oh, is that like comparing? Is that, or? Well, there's, that's what I'm just wondering. If whenever you use a locate mass, is there a? What interests me most? Yeah. If, if you just wanted to say, this interests me, you would just say, loque me gusta, or no? Oh, okay. Meaning, are they the same, or? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're kind. Yeah, those are really similar. Just like you might say, what I like the most or what I'm most interested in, but it's just a word choice that you know. It's it's that thing of the the curveball. You never know what's coming at you. Yeah, um, they may not feel like using gusta, and they'll switch it up and use interesa. See, I. With Kathleen was asking that question, I kind of was wondering also, and maybe it's the same question, but that chunk would work without without having ma as part of it, right? The the thing I like. Uh, it it's the, the yes. The thing that interests me. Yeah. Can can you take that word mas out? 
yes. You could yeah, take the mask out. Yeah. Lo, okay. que, lo que me interesa, lo que me gusta, lo que me anima, lo que me anima. Sí, the mask plugs in that idea of most or more or its intensity. Maybe that is helps. It, is it comparison? Is it comparison? Uh, it can be. It can be uh, a comparison. Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, um, okay, por ejemplo. Um, uh, uh, ah. Uh, te, ¿Te interesan las cosas en esta tienda? Do the things in this uh, store interest you? Um, lo que más me interesa son las cosas de la otra tienda. What interests me? And in that case, it might be, oh, not this store, but the other one more. It could be a comparison. And it kind of depends on the context of that conversation. It could be a comparing of two different things. It could be just an intensifier saying what interests me most. Sí. Y depende. Depends on the other things you've been talking about and including in the conversation. Eso. Bien. Hay ideas con lo que más me interesa, lo que más me interesa. Mm -hmm. Can I no. back up and ask one question about La Verdad, SK? Sí. I was thinking, I forgot, the, the truth is, I forgot your birthday. And it is the, I forgot, is that one of those May Olvido or Olvido? Ah, or is it, me, oh, that's one of those accidentals. Se me olvido. Okay. When I just typed it into my translation, it said, day, but then I was pondering it later and I thought that's not right, is it? No, uh that that sounds like you did it on purpose a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Which but, you but obviously I'm don't why I didn't come to your party. Well, the truth is I forgot your birthday. La verdad es que se me olvidó. Oh, but uh, you need to stay. Sí. Uh, uh, okay. Que había uh, una fiesta. Okay. Or oops, maybe. Se me olvidó. Uh, 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 sí, se me olvidó. Oh, oh, se me, se me olvidó. O oh, mejor, perdón. Uy. O oh, mejor. Se me olvidó uh, que fue tu cumpleaños. Because we were talking about birthday, right? That's right. Yeah. Ah, se me olvidó. Se me olvidó que fue tu cumpleaños. Se me olvidó. Wow, it completely slipped my mind. The se me olvidó is I forgot, but in the case of it completely slipped my mind. Okay. Gee, I didn't. It's the G I didn't mean to. Thanks. It's the oops. See? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, otra idea. Uh, going back to this. Uh, we had a few people who were kind of chiming in. Marcos or somebody that they have an idea yeah. with the interesa. Uh, lo que más me interesa es viajar a lugares nuevos. Ah, perfecto, sí. Lo que más me interesa es viajar a otros lugares o nuevos lugares, lugares uh, en otros países, otras ciudades, etc. Perfecto, bien. Otra idea con lo que más me interesa. Uh, lo que más me interesa es la historia de agua en el oeste. Sí, bien. Excelente, muy bien. Y hay otra. Uh, lo que más me inter interesa de mi trabajo es estar con todos los animales diferentes. Bien, sí. Sí, perfecto. Bueno, otra idea con interesa. Oh, no. Okay. Bien. So, the point with these phrases, like, la verdad es que, la mayoría de, lo que más me gusta, is that these are, are typical phrases that tend to get clumped together. Uh, you know, the la verdad es que 
uh, what they're trying to, and what he's trying to point out with that video is that these are things that you will typically hear people say a lot. Okay. Uh, they are very, very common sorts of phrases, which is why we're trying to switch out and put them in different contexts. Okay. Um, whether you did or didn't have time to watch a little further, here's some other newer phrases we didn't use before. We didn't get to last week, but that he touches on in that video. And this little phrase of un par de, un par de, un par de is all going to come out. It, it'll sound like one word, really, un par de. Un par de is a couple of. And in English, it'll become a couple of, a couple of, <laughs> a couple of bucks. Yeah. A couple of people. Un par de. Okay. And you might hear it paired up with something like this. Necesito un par de entradas para el cine. I need a couple of tickets. I need a couple of tickets. But if you're speaking very proper English, I need a couple of tickets. Okay. Might you say, need, I need two. Yes, you might say, I need two. Before we jump into that one, just, just thinking, in, un par de is a couple of, is there something for a few of or a, a few? Ah, si. Uh, uh, un par de could mean a few, but it's really kind of specific for this many. But yeah. Par literally is pair, and pair means this many. Um, so, yeah, a few is going to become, if you really need a few, meaning more than two, it's slightly, likely going to be one of these two words. Algunos or algunas. Likely. Which would, would be like some, right? Some. Yeah. yeah. Uh, algunos, algunas will be that few. Uh, more than two, but yeah, a bit more. Yeah. Uh, um, Una otra pregunta. Una otra. Um, sí. When I was starting to write and looking for, I thought about gafas del sol but if you say un par de gafas del sol are you saying i want a couple of pair of sunglasses oh. sunglasses are That's you know true. i've got it see sí. sí. gafas de sol lentes de sol lentes de sol or gafas de sol depende si sí, del país uh uh lentes gafas it, it already is the pair see sí? yeah. uh Un par de lentes de sol would mean you want two of these things. Yeah. Oh, it does mean you want two of Yeah. You're probably not things. just looking at this side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, un par. Sí. Uh, vale. Bueno. Uh, so we might combine this uh, um, uh, with different kinds of verbs. Necesito un par de entradas para el cine. ¿Sí? Uh, I need a couple of tickets, meaning you are really looking for two. Quiero, quiero un par un par de horas para hacer mi tarea. Bien, sí. Sí, bien. Uh, uh, quiero un par de libros. I want a couple of books. If you're, you know, just buying a couple, two, literally two of them. Sí. Uh, you might combine it with instead of necesito, instead of quiero, busco. Meaning I'm looking for. Sí. Uh, Busco un par de libros uh, 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 de ciencia ficción. I'm looking for a couple of science fiction books. See? ¿Sí? 
Uh, oh, necesito. Es repetición, perdón. So un par de is literally going to be a couple of. But yeah, if you want to make it a few, you probably want to bump it up to algunos, algunas. Uh, sí, uh, quiero, uh, quiero algunas ideas de ustedes. I want some ideas from you folks. Bien. Okay. Pero entienden, ¿no? Make sense? Sí. Uh, otro, another one, and this gets into a little difference. The es mejor. Uh, es mejor is another idea he pulls out later in that video. Es mejor means it's better. But I want to point something out about the it's better thing. Because sometimes you hear it is it's better to do something, right? Es mejor escuchar español cada día. It's better to listen to Spanish every day. Es mejor. Es mejor. Uh, uh, es mejor cocine, uh, cocinar uh, comida saludable. It's better to cook healthy food. Es mejor tomar menos alcohol. It's better to take to drink a little less alcohol. Uh, es mejor. Es mejor will be followed by... Uh, an infinitive, but sometimes it isn't. So we want to take a little look at when it is and when it isn't. Uh, es mejor escuchar. Uh, we're just talking about, in general, what it's better to do for anybody or for maybe for yourself. Uh, es, es mejor practicar. Aquí durante la clase. ¿Sí? Es mejor, es mejor uh, preguntarle a la maestra. It's better to ask the instructor. Así. Okay. And you're talking about just a real general situation, right? But be aware, be aware if you're saying it's better and then you inject a specific person. Up here, it's es mejor plus an infinitive because we're talking in general terms about anybody at all and nobody in particular. If I inject a person, something is going to happen here. And the first thing that's going to happen is that if we're going to inject a specific person, for, for example, uh, it's better that you leave the house five minutes early okay and if i put you in the picture instead of talking about anybody in general then i need this little word k and then i need this nasty little thing called subjunctive <laughs> nasty to us but very natural to them okay once i inject a human being after this it's better idea it's better is one of the things that will need a K. And then if I talk about a specific person, I'm going to need that opposite vowel kind of verb. And the opposite vowel means for AR verbs, they use ER, IR endings. For ER and IR verbs, they use AR endings. So it's better that you listen, if I'm talking about you specifically, not just any old Joe Schmo, yeah? Es mejor que escuches. Es mejor que escuches. And notice what it happens. I need a K. And then I'm talking about a verb in a tu form. Okay. But if I'm talking about anybody in general, I don't need the K. And it'll just be es mejor infinitivo. Es mejor escuchar. Es mejor comer a uh, 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 comida saludable. Es mejor que tú comas comida saludable. It's better that you eat healthy food. So if I use that it's better idea, 
to talk about a specific person, I'm going to have to do something with that verb and I'm going to need that little K verb. And that little K word is a, a red flag. The K verb is a red flag saying, uh-oh, here comes an actual person, not just anybody. And I need to do something with that verb. So let's get some, let's get some ideas with no change, just plain infinitive first, but with es mejor, and then see how that will change once we inject a person. So, a ver, let's just work on the es mejor with just an infinitive first. Es mejor. Llevar los platos antes de acostarse. Ah, es mejor lavar los platos. Antes de, an Antes de acostarse, okay. uh, acostarte, uh, acostarse, sí, acostarse, because we're talking about anybody in general. So it's acostarse. It's better to wash the dishes before going to bed. Sí. Es mejor, and, and we're not meaning you or your kids or us. It's just anybody. Es mejor, it's better to do this. Es mejor. Ah, por ejemplo, um, es mejor uh, relajarse un poquito al fin del día. It's better to relax a little bit at the end of the day. And we're talking about anybody at all. So, Es mejor relajarse. Uh, sí, sí, Marcos. Es mejor uh, caminar cuando no hace mucho calor. Cuando no, ah, sí. Uh, uh, sí. Um, uh, ooh, and that might really be haga mucho calor because you're talking about... Uh, a general condition that may happen in the future, but we don't know when. Es mejor caminar. It's better to walk. Es mejor caminar uh, 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 una milla cada día. It's better to walk one mile every day. See? ¿sí? Es mejor caminar por uh, 30 minutos cada día. ¿Sí? Ah. Uh, Es, es mejor, ah, es mejor, ah, ah, es mejor trabajar con, ah, o oh, eh, es mejor cuidar a los niños. It's better to take care of the kids. Ah, ok, sí, otra idea con infinitivo, o no. Um Es mejor mo moverse que sentarse en la sofá. Perfecto. Es mejor moverse. ¿Sí? Uh, es mejor ma moverse en vez de sentarse en el sofá. Better than sitting on the couch. Perfecto, <laughs> sí. Uh, bueno. Uh, es mejor... Uh, es mejor comprar... Uh, uh, las cosas uh, por oferta. It's better to buy things on sale. Sí. Es mejor comprar las cosas uh, uh, por oferta. Things that are on sale. Sí. Did, did you write down the on sale oferta? Did, did you spell it? Did you write it on the on your? The, the, oh, the phrase the phrase you use for on sale. Oh, uh, por oferta. Or sometimes it might be phrased as uh, en venta. Either way. See? ¿Sí? See? ¿Sí? En oferta, por oferta, oferta. Oferta is an offer. And oferta indicates a sale. Oh, 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 ah, también, también, ah, por descuento. 
Discount. All those things are, yeah, all those things might be used to talk about sale. And they squint, though, looks like discount, and that is what it means. See? Uh, and it might be por descuento, en descuento, por oferta, en oferta. Uh, así es, ok. Ah, uh, uh, bien, sí. Vale. Um, ok. But that's going to change if instead I talk about anybody in general, it's going to change when I plug in a human being, an actual person. Ok. Uh, so. How it's going to change in is, first of all, primero, primero, es mejor que, es mejor que. So let me plug in here. Uh, if you are referring to a specific person, uh, it, it, it needs some tweaks. <laughs> it needs some tweaks uh, to be said naturally. So es mejor que. Uh, instead of es mejor escuchar español cada día, es mejor que escuches o que ustedes escuchen o que escuchemos. And it's going to sound like it's the wrong conjugation. Yeah, this is that subjunctive thing. But once I put an actual human being into the mix, uh, we need this que to be the flag word to say, uh oh, watch out. We were listening now for a person. And it's going to be a conjugation, but it's going to be what is using the uh, opposite kind of infinitive group, right? Es mejor que escuches uh, 15, uh, 15 minutos de español cada día. Um, it's better that you wash those dishes becomes es mejor que laves los platos. Antes de acostarte, antes de acostarte. Mm. Yeah, now it can't be acostarse, it's got to be acostarte, because I'm talking about you. Uh, let's say it's a family project to wash those dishes. Es mejor que lavemos los platos. ¿Sí? Bien. And then it would be escotar. Escotarnos. Ah, 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 antes de acostarnos. No. Sí, sí. Acostarnos. eso, sí. Sí, antes de, es mejor que lavemos los platos antes de acostarnos. Sí, bien. Ah, uh, perfecto. Ah, uh, this little phrase here, it's better to relax a little bit, becomes... Uh, oh, perdón. Es mejor. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ooh. Que, we got to have our que in there. Es mejor que te relajes un poquito. It's better that you relax a little, right? Uh, it's better that we relax a little becomes, es mejor que nos relajemos un poquito. Que nos relajemos, ¿sí? Ah, uh, bien. Okay. Uh, a ver, ah, uh, it's better to walk. Sí. Uh, es mejor, uh, es mejor que abuelita uh, camine, uh, camine diez minutos cada día. It's better that granny walks five minutes every day. Ah, sí. Bien. Uh, because I'm putting an actual person in here, I have my que, which is going to be my little red flag saying, oh, here comes a human being. And then, uh, abuelita, perdón, que abuelita camine. Sí. A ver. 
And it could also be an actual name, Pablo. Oh, sí. Es mejor Pablo. que... Sí. Uh, otro ejemplo. Uh, let's, say, let's say Pablo is running a marathon. Yeah? Pablo's got to up his mileage. Uh, Pablo needs to get up to uh, 15 miles. Pablo's only running five. He's got to up the ante, okay? Uh, es mejor uh, que Pablo corra, corra 15 millas en vez de 10 instead of 10. It's, it's better he runs 15 rather than 10 instead of 10. Uh, es mejor que Pablo corra. It's better that he runs. And let's shorten that down. Es, es mejor que Pablo corra 15 millas, ¿sí? Uh, para prepararse. To prepare himself. ¿Sí? Uh, para prepararse para el maratón. Uh, maratón. Por ejemplo, ¿sí? ¿Bien? And we haven't gotten into subjunctive much, but at some point, could you, not today necessarily, but sort of define what, what and when? Sí, eso, sí. La semana que viene, yeah. Uh, next week. That is oh. something we are going to look at. And we're going to look at it with these es mejor phrases, okay? Oh. So mm -hmm. the point with... Uh, the point with this video is he his point was he was talking about things that you hear people using a lot. And actually, subjunctive, you do hear a lot. So we're going to take some time this fall uh, to work this subjunctive thing uh, more. But we're going to introduce it with these S phrases, okay? That's a nice and easy way to illustrate why we use it, when we use it, and it'll be more than just es mejor. But there, th there's the es mejor with an infinitive, meaning you're not talking about any one person, and the es mejor que. So we're going to investigate next week what those es phrases are. And in English, they become it's. Okay, so, entonces, por ejemplo, for example, it's important. Some examples of when this will happen in Spanish. It's important to have a pet. Es importante tener una mascota. Es importante tener una mascota. I'm not talking about any one person. So I can just use es importante tener. But if I want to say it's important that my grandkid has a pet. Es importante que, here's the red flag, que, es importante que mi nieto tenga una mascota. That is what's going to happen. So we'll take a look next week at why those subjunctive things look funny and when we need the, the subjunctive in those es phrases and when we don't. But phrases that might use subjunctive are es mejor, es importante, Es necesario, ¿sí? Es imposible, es posible. <laughs> uh, bien, uh, there will be a lot of phrases that start with es, and in English, they start with its. Its. And the it is just talking about it's some general thing. It's good. It's good to walk every day. It's important to walk every day. It's necessary to walk every day. It's better to walk every day. Uh, these it's phrases uh, may or may not need a subjunctive. So we're going to take a look at when they do and when they don't. I'll, I'll find a good video for that. But this is one kind of thing. He had the es mejor in his video. So that's just one example. So we'll take that off into a little uh, 
different direct direction next week, but that'll be kind of a long thing to talk about. And uh, um, here's another one. No creo que. This is another thing he used in the video later on. And if you want to watch like the latter half of what that video was, this is where these came up. Uh, uh, this is another one that will also use subjunctive. So we're getting a little bit into subjunctive here. He had the phrase, no creo que, no creo que. No creo que means I don't think that. I'll put it below. I don't think that. Okay. No creo que uh, is going to need subjunctive for sure. Always. Subjunctive comes up when we are, it's a verb form that comes up when we're expressing an action that is not necessarily really going on or when we're talking about an action that really isn't happening at all. Uh, so if we're unsure of it or if it's contrary to fact, it isn't really happening. Spanish needs subjunctive for that. So let's take a look at what that looks like again. And again, it's going to be opposite vowel. It's going to swap vowels. The verbs look like they're conjugated wrong in present. They're going to look like they're wrong. But what happens is AR verbs take on the ending you would have for ERIR and ERIR verbs take on the AR forms. And this one is kind of an oddball here. Well, it's definitely an oddball. Aya is what I becomes. No creo que haya espacio en el carro. I don't think there's any space in the car or I don't think there's any room in the car. Yeah. No creo que haya. Because I was saying, I don't think that. This is uh, no creo que requires subjunctive because you're saying the situation it's not happening. And because it's not part of the real world, what's really happening, we need subjunctive. I don't think uh, there is enough space. That's the form we need for Aya. Uh, yeah. uh, um, again, so that'll happen. Um, and that's kind of a little more complicated thing, but we're going to practice with these bigger ones next week that are easier to pick up on. So this we just mentioned because he talks about it in the video, but we'll come back to that a different day when it feels a little more natural. See, ¿Sí? bien, vale. Okay. A ver. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Ah. Uh, wait, they stop. I'm looking for my next bit here. Um, so we'll have a little subjunctive lesson uh, next week. Uh one thing I want to kind of look at with you is, again, this is an idea kind of related to that chunking idea uh, that was from last week's video. We busco donde esta. Perdón. But I had this up in my feed, but I did not. Okay, a ver. Uh, this is kind of related to that chunking idea a little bit, but not necessarily in the in the way of uh, words running together, 
but uh, how how we will connect, not not actually running words together to become more fluid or to listen and hear words better, but rather how to get to a logical, a logically connecting one idea to another in a conversation. Okay. And I'll let her explain here a little bit better. Uh, this is a longish video. Uh, I would like you to watch it a little bit this week and just Perfect. ponder this. Secreto para mantener una conversación fabulosa en español. ¿Te cuesta mantener una conversación en español? And so what this idea is going to be, when somebody asks you a question and then you respond to it, a natural way to respond and to link in uh, related ideas. Okay? And the te cuesta, does it cost you That means, is it hard for you? Te cuesta, literally, it costs you, meaning it's tough. It's hard. Is it hard for you to maintain, meaning keep it rolling? Yeah, to keep a conversation rolling. And she's going to show you what she means. ¿Te cuesta mean. hacerla interesante? Bueno, desafortunadamente esto es un problema que se le presenta a la mayoría de los estudiantes en sometimes. algún momento de sus vidas hablando español. <laughs> Generalmente... At, at some moment in your lives of speaking Spanish, this will come up. You know, you've got an answer and it might sound like a textbook answer, but you want it to roll along more smoothly or you want to connect an idea to your answer that makes sense to them. Pasa porque aprendemos español en libros. And this difficulty happens because we learn responses in books and that's not the way people will always talk. O en un talk. salón de clases y las conversaciones de la vida real son algunas veces completamente diferentes. And real conversations are sometimes, algunas veces, sometimes, completely different. O no son tan estructuradas. Uh, but they're, they're not so structured. Por eso, hoy te voy a dar el secreto para tener una conversación fabulosa y te voy a decir qué puedes hacer para llevar tu español al siguiente nivel. Vamos a hablar de los... Yeah, we're going to take speaking to a different cuatro level. puntos importantes en una conversación. And I believe I've got like two of these four points that I'd like you to think about, not all four, but... Vamos a hablar de cómo iniciar una conversación. And that part you probably don't need to worry about so much, cómo iniciar una conversación, how to initiate a conversation. Not as... You know how to initiate a conversation, ¿sí? Hola, hola, sí. Ah, ¿cómo te llamas? Ah, uh, ¿por qué estás aquí? Why are you here? Estoy aquí como turista, etc., etc. You know how to initiate a conversation. So we're going to kind of fast forward out of the greeting phrases. Hi. Las preguntas son interesantes porque motivan a la otra persona a que empiece a hablar de algo más específico. Además, a los hispanohablantes, debo decir, nos gusta mucho compartir con los demás cuando nos preguntan algo más específico. Siento que tengo permiso. We always like when you ask about something more specific. Para hablar de mí y de mi vida. Ahora vamos al punto número dos, cómo desarrollar dos. la conversación. Cómo desarrollar la conversación. How to develop up the conversation. This part is kind of interesting and este a punto more es el más importante, ¿verdad? Porque es el más importante. So we're not going to focus on the uno that she gives us of iniciar, starting a conversation, but uh, developing a conversation, meaning let it, letting it roll to uh, logical connected ideas. Porque vamos a modificar un poco lo que hemos aprendido en los libros. Ya hemos establecido una conversación. El hispanohablante está interesado en... Ok, so she's saying we've already established a conversation and the person, uh, the Spanish speaker is interested in talking. Y ahora 
Muy bien, lo que hemos aprendido en los libros es que generalmente estamos acostumbrados a hacer preguntas y de responder con uh, we're used to asking questions and responding. algunas estructuras o frases que no son tan naturales. Uh, we are often in books taught structures or sentences, frases or sentences that are maybe not supernatural. Por ejemplo, he escuchado Extremely a alguno natural. de mis estudiantes en las clases de conversación grupales que tenemos todas las semanas. Cuando yo les pregunto este tipo de, de cosas para que hablen de, de sí mismos, yo escucho una situación. When I ask them questions that they talk about themselves. Situación así, ¿no? Por ejemplo, ayer fui al cine. Yesterday I went Okay, I'll take this up. Yesterday, I went to the movies. There's a conversation topic, right? Ayer fui al cine. Ah. Ah, ¿qué película viste? Oh, what movie did you see? Yeah. And the person answers, and this is a title. Contratiempo. ¿A qué? That's just a title. ¿Qué hora fuiste? A las cinco. ¿A qué hora fuiste? What? What time did you go? de la tarde. Es, Five o'clock. Es muy diálogo. Este tipo de conversaciones parecen sacadas de una película o de un libro, ¿verdad? Yeah. This is a conversation that probably comes out of a book. Únicamente tenemos que decir que no hay nada malo con estas preguntas. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with this kind of question. Estas respuestas, Especialmente si tu nivel de español es un poco más básico y gramaticalmente son correctas. So, this is grammatically correct to respond this way uh, uh, and there's nothing really wrong with it, but it's probably not typically what Vamos somebody's going to ask you. Pero pueden sonar muy directo. Parecen como si fueran un interrogatorio. <laughs> seems like an... Seems like... Uh, yeah. An interrogation. Uh, yeah. Went to the movies. What time did you go to the movies? What did you see? <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It's kind of, it's abrupt. Okay. It's what we learn in books, but it's kind of abrupt. Like an interview. Una entrevista. It's like an interview. An interrogation. Una entrevista. <ríe> sé que tu objetivo es conversar con los hispanohablantes y este tipo de preguntas pueden cortar la conversación. So, so these kind of things that are abrupt can cut the conversation off. Okay. They sound a little abrupt, direct. Uh, Hacerla como muy cortante y no darle mucho tiempo a la otra persona para hablar y hasta se puede sentir un poco incómodo. Y también Can algo que quiero decirte es que cuando el hispanohablante te hace esta misma pregunta, intenta elaborar tus respuestas. Ah, so the idea is going to be when we, she says this number two thing is super important to develop a conversation, you want to uh, let it roll into a natural progression of what would you really do in your language to talk about that experience of going to the movies. No solamente responder con sí. Not just a yes, no answer or what time did you go and what did you see. Sí o no. Tal vez puedes agregar más información. But adding in, agregar means adding in more information. Hacer una pregunta, preguntarle al hispanohablante y hacer que la conversación fluya. And letting the conversation flow a little bit better. Un poquitito better. más. I'll show you an Por example. ejemplo, en la misma situación, ¿verdad? ¿Te gusta viajar? La última vez que viajé fue en mayo. Ah, do you like to travel? The last time I traveled was in May. Okay. Sí, me gusta. Te yeah, I like. Imaginas en esta situación, quiero que mires esta conversación y que veas que técnicamente no hay nada malo, pero la primera persona estaba hablando, compartiendo un poco más de información y la respuesta fue muy corta. Y so, if all you answer back is yes, I like to travel, it's kind of abrupt. You want something that's going to flow into a connected idea. And I'll 
show you what we mean by that with the little slide here. Y yo entendería que esta persona no quiere continuar conversando conmigo. Entonces podemos elaborar un poquito más en la respuesta, dar información, hacer un comentario de lo que la otra persona dijo para poder llevar la conversación a otro nivel y que siga fluyendo la conversación. So we want to kind of tie in what that person first said and and add more information to it to let a conversation flow a little more naturally. Por ejemplo, ¿te gusta viajar? La última vez que viajé fue en mayo. Okay, so here's the same start, but she's going to have a different response. Instead of just, I like to travel, boom, nothing else. <laughs> ¿Te gusta viajar? La última vez que viajé fue en mayo. Sí, me gusta. No he viajado últimamente, pero mi hermano estuvo en París la semana pasada. Pasada. Okay, so now that is maybe longer than what you'll do. So let's simplify it. Let's simplify. Si me gusta. Yeah, I like to travel. No he viajado últimamente means I haven't traveled lately. Uh, uh, that's maybe a little bit long. Uh, no viajé eh, uh, este año. I didn't travel this year. Let's simplify it. Instead of the no he viajado, uh, no viajé es, uh, este año. I didn't travel this year. Pero mi hermano estuvo en París. My brother was in Paris. Okay. Um, we're, we're adding some more information. Instead of just, yeah, I like to travel, like personalizing it a little bit more. Adding extra information. You know, I didn't, but somebody in my family did. Something that's a little more of a natural reaction because you're giving more tidbits out to that person who started the conversation. Okay, vale? Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things that maybe uh, we'll try for next week. Um, And these two things with stars are the things that are important. And we're going to look next week, we're going to look at a little bit with subjunctive, and then we're going to look at a little bit of this, how to develop, how to let the conversation develop a little more um, natural, uh, naturally. See, uh, we'll do this another week, changing uh, topic, because that's a little bit uh, uh, kind of a, lesser thing. This number two thing is big. Big, 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 big. Como desarrollar una conversación. Uh, uh, and I've got the little exchange here. This that she put down here is like an interrogation. Yesterday I went to the movies. What movie did you see? And then they give you the title. Ah, what time, uh, what time did you go? Five o'clock. It sounds like, hey, you know, They're taking note. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? And it's great in a book. Yeah, a book will kind of tell you this is how. But, you know, probably it's going to develop uh, in different ways if you're really talking with a real person. Like, what movie did you see? Oh, why was it interesting? Maybe you want to connect. Uh ¿Cuál fue lo que te gustó más? What did you like best about it? Take that information and give them a tidbit back to elaborate. Yeah. Uh, bien. So there are different ways you can develop, but instead of just a quick answer back, taking that conversation and rolling Uh, uh, making it a little more, giving more information about yourself or asking some more information about what they told you. That's how we develop a conversation. So I'm going to give you a little uh, scenario for next week that will hopefully let you do that so you can think a little about it. Yeah. And it'll be a real common situation. And what I'm going to want you to do is to develop a way to let that conversation roll, either ask something else of 
the person in your group uh, about uh, going out to a restaurant or going to a movie or something they watched on TV or, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, and instead of short answers back and forth, asking for more information from that person you're talking with or relating something from your experience to inject into that conversation. See, Yane? Uh, instead of just, yesterday I went to the movies, what movie did you see? Uh, title, oh, why did you like it? Yeah. Or what kind of movie was it? Um, I've been meaning to see that. Yeah, I would like to see that too. Was it worth it? Okay, so ways to let the conversation flow a little more naturally instead of just question, respond, question, respond, right? Either asking the person for more information or injecting some ideas from your own experience into the information. That makes some sense, see? Claro, okay. And I'll give you maybe two scenarios. I think two will be enough to work off of. Two will be enough. Um, and uh, hopefully you can uh, let more information, think of asking for more information to the person you're speaking to or injecting your own experience into that conversation to make it interesting. See, bien? Okay, vale. Um, actually, I think rather than having you watch that video, I will just have you look at the little scenarios from the my, my notes on that. Uh, because I would rather you had uh, a listening video with some story information. Okay. A ver. So, uh, what you're going to have for uh, story listening. Os gusta ir al has cine? a, a teeny tiny bit of cursing in it, so they have a disclaimer <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> and I have to tell you that, uh, oh, yeah, it's uh, people get. Uh, 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 I think you're going to understand what he what you know. It's it's not cursing all the way through. First of all, para que sepan, so that you know. He's not cussing all through the video. He's got one little phrase in there that's kind of vulgar, but honestly, it's something a typical person would say. And I think you're going to recognize it. Okay. He's got a phrase with cojones and yeah. <laughs> a, a nice non-vulgar way would be say, saying what really rattles my cage. Yeah. <laughs> but he's going to use what a typical guy would say something bugs me. Uh, things that yeah. bug him about going to the movies. Okay, see? Okay. Things that ruin the experience. So, uh, there you go. That's going to be your listening video. You will definitely need the closed caption box. So, I'm going to just play the very beginning part so you know what he's talking about. Me encanta. Y sería perfecto si no fuera por estos detalles. It would be perfect, meaning going to the movies, if it weren't for these few details. ¿Eh? Ah. Hola a todos. Bienvenidos a esta serie en la que os voy a hablar de cosas que me molestan, cosas que me... Oh, things that... Bother me. Bother me. Irritan. Cosas que me... Que me irritan. Things that... Yeah, irritate. 
irritate me, annoy me. Tocan los cojones. Ah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's a colloquial phrase, and it's something that guys say because, you know, yeah. Recordad que si queréis ver el resto de esta serie, os dejo el enlace abajo en la descripción para poder ver más episodios gratis en la web de Dreaming Spanish. Y sí, hoy voy a hablar de el cine, de la experiencia de ir al cine a ver una película, ¿no? Porque, a ver, no me malinterpretéis. A mí me gusta... Yeah, don't take it the wrong way oh. no me mal, inter eh, eh, y mal interpretéis don't yeah don't get me wrong yeah misinterpret don't misinterpret what i'm gonna say me gusta me gusta ir al cine me gusta ver películas en la gran pantalla no i like seeing things on the big screen big screen pero hay Tantas molestias asociadas con la experiencia de ir a ver una película. Ah, but there are so many annoyances uh, associated with the experience of going to, the mo to a movie. Cine. En primer lugar está el coste, está el dinero que te... Ah, in the first place, there's... Yeah, the price. The price, yeah, el coste, the cost, okay? Uh, and so he's going to take it from there. So I wanted to, you know, get you past the little, the, the, the meaning, minor custom thing, and you're not going to hear it after that. Uh, but he's going to talk about the little things that annoy him. And um, I will go through and see if there's any vocabulary from here that you need. I think with you have the... Uh, closed captions, you will not need any of that if you click on the closed captions, okay? Bien? Uh, because you'll get the, uh, uh, you know, pretty close approximation uh, from the AI uh, subtitles down here. Bien? So there's your storytelling video, um, annoyances at the movies, and we'll give you a couple of premises to try to get a good conversation rolling. And we'll do some of that role playing together in big group first. Yeah. And then maybe uh, turn you loose into some smaller groups to do the uh, uh, same thing with uh, groups of two or three people. Bien? Vale? And a little introduction to subjunctive. Eso es. Okay? Vale? Okay. Good? See? Sí? Bien? Adios. Bien. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll hopefully get a little uh, practice with connecting some ideas and getting a nice conversation rolling for people for next week. Eso es todo. That's it. Okay. Está bien. Gracias. 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 Sí. Y nos vemos. Nos vemos. Hasta la próxima.